Hey everybody, welcome to The Blacklist, the show where we find the elite, we figure out how they rose to the top and how they stay there. Now, this is a special treat because not very often do we get Chris Winfield in the house. If you guys don't know him, he's a powerful, powerful man, a powerful entrepreneur. Um, I'm grateful that he's here. Um, he gave us a little bit of his time, so we're going to go ahead and utilize it. Chris, please give us an introduction about who you are, what you do, and we'll get into it. All right. What's up, Ulysses? So good to be here. So my name's Chris Winfield, as you said, and I'm from New York City. And let me talk about really where I started. I wasn't meant, you said I'm like a powerful entrepreneur. I was not meant to be an entrepreneur at all. Like I grew up in a small town, literally the, the, the I looked it up on Wikipedia the other day <laughs> and the median income was $26,000 upstate New York. And I was, a, I hated school, you know, all this stuff. And yeah. like every single one of my Every single person in my family worked in a school system. And I got in trouble every single day in school. So all my my goal was not to be an entrepreneur, yep. was not to be rich, nothing like that. It was just don't work in a school system. Like yeah. that was that was my goal. Like whatever I could do, like get a job, like as long as it wasn't in a school, that was gonna be cool. <laughs> and I did get a job. I had one job in my life other than like high school and stuff like that. And it was working for this web development company. And this is like back when like the companies were trading at like six, like Razorfish was a big web development company. It was trading at like $6 billion and all this stuff. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to get rich right here. Like yeah. I got in on the ground floor and it was the most, oh, can I curse? Yeah. Yeah. All right. hey, three most... people have said this so far. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's like a nice place. Like, I don't know if you can curse. All right, so it was the most fucked up, like, dysfunctional company ever. So the guy who brought me in was a, like, he, he, had, left his, he had left his family, and he wound up in rehab for a terrible coke problem six months in. And he was, like, the most stable of the people. What the So, fuck? yeah, so, like, the other guy, one of the guys was the number six guy at Stratton Oakmont, which was, like, the Wolf of Wall Street. Like, yeah, yeah. Like he had to leave at lunch to go, like, meet his, like, parole officer for oh the God. FBI and all this stuff. So, anyway... The, this company, like I, you know, I was like, all right, this is going to be my thing. And I really believed the dream. And it was a web development company and they did nothing for people. Like it was like, it was so bad. So like there was no marketing or anything like that. So I finally left. They had stopped paying me and, you know, all this stuff. And I finally left. I'm like, all right, I'm never going to rely on somebody else for money again. I'm never going to rely on somebody for my security anymore anything like that. So I started a company, a similar company, a web development company, but I started to learn all about like SEO and how yeah. to bring, you know, traffic in. And the problem was like, I, like there was a zillion other companies doing exactly the same thing. And I didn't have like connections. I didn't have like good, you know, like I'm, my company's called super connector media. I'm known as a super <laughs> connector. I had no connections. I had no money. And there was like, I was a commodity. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there, there was so many other people and companies, like a zillion other companies doing the exact same thing. So what I thought about was one night I was watching TV and I was watching CNBC and there was a guy on, I have no idea who it was. And I'm watching this guy and I'm like, damn, like I'll buy whatever this guy's selling. And then I'm like, I want to be this guy. And I'm like, then I, I was like, all right, well, why can't I do that for myself? Yeah. Why can't I, like whatever was happening from watching the TV and seeing this guy and the authority and the trust and all that coming like right through to me, yeah. I was like, all right, damn, like this is the answer. So I started to really like learn everything I could about publicity and networking and all these things. And I got in an article in the New York Times. Like it was like a, you know, like a, just a mention, you know, it yeah, wasn't yeah. about me. Yeah, it's not that big, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I like put that everywhere though. It was like on my website. It was like, I almost got it tattooed on my forehead as oh, seen wow, in the New yeah. York Times. Like, you know, I was really proud of it. And it didn't like it had nothing like I was like one little mention. But, you know, it was the it, it was the first like domino, so to speak. And then I got in this big article about SEO, about yeah. exactly what we did in USA Today. And it went everywhere. And literally within six uh, hours, a company, um, somebody from Virgin, uh, one of the Virgin companies contacted me. They, be, they wound up becoming my first multi-million dollar client. So I went from like, you know, barely like scraping by, like fighting for, you know, scraps to now all of a sudden this like company that paid me like 1.8 million over like three years or something like that. And then they also, all these companies referred and, you know, everything yeah. like that. So then I started to really leverage that for speaking and, you know, boom, it was on from there. And so like, 
I always like all the different companies I had, I just leveraged, you know, yeah. PR and media and like and networking. And, you know, I just thought it was so easy for every single person, right? I thought every single person just knows how to do this. I was so wrong. Nobody yeah. knew how to do it, right? You yeah. know this. So, um, you know, about four or five years ago, I started doing this event mm -hmm. called Unfair Advantage Live. And the way I came about it, I wish it was like my, I had a good, uh, like it was my idea or something, but I was in a small mastermind. Um, and I really believe in the power of masterminds and groups and, you know, having people around you, um, you know, just like we were yesterday. But as this small mastermind, we called it the dad mastermind. It was myself, um, this guy, Jonathan Fields, who was like one of the top podcasts in the world. Todd Herman, who's best selling author, you know, alter ego effect. And um, this guy, Ryan Lee, who owns a supplement company. Yeah. And, you know, like we like they're talking to me and they're I had a completely different company at the time. Self uh, basically uh, self improvement and like um, uh, productivity company it was doing really really well. But they're like, you that's not what you do. Yeah. I just gotten really into that. And they looked at me one day and they're like, when we talk about you, we describe you as our unfair advantage. I was like, what do you mean by that? Like, well, you can take out your phone and text somebody and you know get a book agent, get a get me in the media, you know, get whatever it is in 30 yeah. seconds. And it would take us like six months. I was like, oh, shit. All right. <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah. And I was like, you guys, like, that is not like what everyone can do. And they're like, no. So anyway, I, um, I wound up helping Todd out a lot with his. He had a big event. I helped him, like, fill it. I crushed it on stage for him. And he's like, I got to pay you back. Yeah. And, you know, I did it like we were talking about last night. Like, I did it with zero you know, um, zero idea of like, you know, wanting anything, but there's something called the law of reciprocity. Yeah. You help people. It's going to come back to you. Yeah. It doesn't have to come from that person, but it's going to come back to you <laughs> no matter what. Yeah. In this case, it came directly from him. And so we did the first event together called unfair advantage live. It was a one day event. I planned everything like the day before, Oh my God. <laughs> like, you know, this, I do everything last minute. <laughs> And, you know, it, and it was really, really successful. And then from there, I did another one. There was no business model around it or anything. I just kept listening to what people wanted. And then eventually, um, you know, after doing like three of them, I was like, there's a real like, you know, there, there's a real need here. And, you know, I just kept listening to what people wanted. So it started with like a group program. And then it went to like a full out agency because somebody yeah, said like, yeah. hey, uh, you know, we're not going to do it ourselves. And, um, you know, and, and then my, um, who's my, now my fiance and Jen Gottlieb, she became my partner in this and, you know, and, and it just kept growing. And it's, you know, it recently, as you know, we sold our, the agency part of it. Yep. Um, and now we refer every client to you <laughs> and that's great. I absolutely love it because you crush it for them. Um, and yeah, but you know, the main thing that we're focused on is really like our, our goal is to help people be seen, yeah. you know, to be seen truly. Like, so whatever that means for, you know, each person. So for some people that means like, you know, being everywhere in the media or being on every single stage for right. others, it just means that they feel good about themselves. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, like that they're killing it in their business, but they still feel like a fraud. Like, you know, yeah. that's one of the biggest things that I find is that every single person, like I talk to billionaires and they're like, I'm afraid that, you know, I'm going to be found <laughs> out. Like, I was talking to um, uh, a couple of years ago. This is my favorite example of this. And then I'll let you ask a question because I've been no, rambling. You're good. You're good. Um, so I was talking to this guy who was a friend. And at the time, he was the highest paid actor on cable TV. He was killing it. What's his name? Asked, I can't say. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> um, so you've seen the show, guaranteed. Um, so anyway, he was telling me, he's like, I always like I always feel like one day somebody's going to come in and say, all right, let's go. We know you don't know what you're doing. Damn. Let's go. And I was like, are you kidding me? And he said he said like the way it really, really came through and where he realized it was like an inside job. He had just bought this new house in L.A. and beautiful house. And he got up to like go to the bathroom or something. And he was like walking. Then he walked to the kitchen and he walked by his dining room table, this beautiful dining room. table. He's like. It was as if the dining room table was talking. I'm like, who the fuck do you think you are? Like, everyone knows you don't know what you're doing. And I was like, holy shit. Like, this yeah. guy who you would never think that in a million years, in a million years, super confident, like, literally, like, being paid at that time, like, I think, like, five hundred dollars or $750,000 an episode. And then, like, plus royalties from everything. And 
you know, and he's thinking like waiting for people to come in, somebody to come in and be like, you don't know what you're doing. Like, yeah. and it's like an inside job, you know? And like, that's one of the things that I've seen like over and over and over from people, uh, you know, especially entrepreneurs is like that they, they just, you know, they have this imposter syndrome. There's, and anyone who says they don't like is full of shit. Like yeah. at some point you have it, like, like I have it every single day. You know what I mean? Like every different times. And I just like, it's, do I get past it or not? Right, right. And I've been to your events, dude. They're amazing. They're phenomenal. I remember the first time I went, it was in New York City. I forgot. It was like maybe three years ago yeah. or so. I don't know. Um, and you had staff members from like places like Entrepreneur, like um, CNN Money Finance or something like yeah. that. I'm like, how does Chris know these people, you know? And, and me being there, I'm like, I don't want to poach and you know? <laughs> but like, you know, for, for you, that comes easy. For other people, like you said, it's like, I would never have that conversation with that person if it wasn't for Chris. Mm. So for your events and for people that are going to these, what is the transformation that they get at the end of it? Yeah. So I, I think the big thing is like the immediate, like right from the beginning. So here's the big thing, like, and this is my secret for events right here yeah. is make every single person feel completely comfortable and amazing from the second they walk in. Because here's the thing, most events like that you go to, it's fucking clicks and hierarchies and, mm. you know, cool kid club and all this. And it's <laughs> bullshit. And that what happens is if you're new to that and you walk in, then you, you know, you, you feel like you feel that energy. You feel yeah. like shit, you know. And, um, you know, so that like right from the beginning, we make people feel completely comfortable. And it doesn't matter. Like we say, like right from the stage, like there's no hierarchies, no clicks. I don't care if you've been here 10 times. I don't care if you've paid us a million dollars. Like you're no different than the person who just came here for the first time ever. Yeah. And, you know, so what we hear from people is that the second they walk in, there's this energy that they don't feel anywhere else. And that's like so important and it's so overlooked with events because it's like, you know, you think about like, oh, the programming has to be perfect and what they learn. But, you know, there's a Maya Angelou quote where she said, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. People will never forget how you made them feel. Yes. So that's like one of the things to always think about, like how are you making this person feel? So like right from the beginning, when they walk in, boom, make them feel amazing, you know, hook them up with somebody, whatever it has to be. Um, and like then, you know, everything's easier from there. So the transformation is just like right away, you're feeling comfortable. You feel like you belong because for most people, they don't feel like they belong, yeah. you know, and that's like such a big thing. I remember I went to an event one time and it was this like uh, this like health influencer. It's a pretty big event. And they had on everyone there had, you know, uh, a million like doctor, you know, and then this and that. And they had it all in their name badge. And. They put Mrs. Chris Winfield, <laughs> like, so it, it would say like, you know, Mr. or Mrs., yeah. whatever. For some reason, they put Mrs. Chris Winfield on mine. So I go to this event. <laughs> I don't know anyone. It's all these health influencers, like, you know, these big people, doctors, you know, they all think they're so cool. And I get there and it says Mrs. Chris Winfield. I'm like, oh my God. So then that's my, that's my badge. That's your identity for the that's day. That's my badge, yeah. <laughs> and then like, I get to my table. I'm sitting with all these people. I'm Mrs. Chris Winfield right there. I was like, oh my God. So, you know, what did I do for that? I leaned into it. Like I joked, I'm like, oh, you're a doctor and you know, times eight or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like I barely fucking graduated college. Like I'm Mrs. Chris Winfield. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but, um, you know, it, it, it's, I think the, the transformation really is that feeling like you belong, feeling like you can talk to people. So like we, you know, we have this media mixer and, you know, we bring in like 200 top, um, influencers and media people in the country that's why yeah. we do it in new york and you know they they you get to connect to them but on a real level so for example sure. we don't say like go and pitch to this person just find out what they need you know yeah. have a real conversation i remember this lady was kind of skeptical of that she was like uh, she was kind of a know-it-all and she's awesome though and she she went and she started talking to this guy and he goes oh man like you know what I really need? And he was a producer for uh, Good Morning America. Oh, shoot. And she's talking to him. And he's like, you know what I really need? I need somebody who has a kid going to college and that they can both come on and talk about, like, you know, I forget what it was. Or who's graduating college. And she's like, oh, my God, that's me. She's like, I have a kid. So that 
Monday or Tuesday, she was on Good Morning America with her son, with um, uh, Barbara Corcoran. It was like a Shark Tank thing. Yeah. Um, Robert Hercevic and I think one of the other guys. And so she got to be on Good Morning America just from that conversation. She didn't pitch her, herself. She didn't walk up to him, anything like that. You know what I mean? And, like, that's that's the thing, just having real relationships, real conversations, and, like, also the magic of in person. You know, like yeah. 10 minutes of, like, just talking to somebody in person is, like, it's equal to one year online. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let, let me be – but, like, for you and Jen, though, it's a superpower. It's a skill. You know, you make it sound so easy. Just make someone feel good, right? Make someone feel good. But you do it so fun, like so well. Yesterday we were talking. Jen got a standing ovation, right? Yeah. She's like at almost every single event you could think Everything. of, um, and that's because she does. Fun, she's great on stage, right? She makes people feel some type of way. And you guys are like a power couple. You know how to do that, like you know, really well. Um, for people that are listening, how can they um, make it genuine? you know, realistic for them and, and and do that because you guys do that really well everywhere at your events, in person, on stage. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good, here's an interesting thing. We're both introverts. Nobody what? would think that a hundred percent. So um, I was talking to your girlfriend last night and I'm like, I am very, I'm very intentional about my energy. Yeah. So if I don't really like somebody, like I'm not going to, like if I don't really pick up on, you know, who they are or whatever, like I just don't really have anything yeah. to do with them. Um, I was I had this whole conversation with her last night because I think she's amazing. And I was like actually talking to her for a long time yeah. because she's somebody I thought was great. So yeah, we're both introverts, um, which nobody would believe, but meaning like that we like we can turn it on at any time. Um, and you know, do but like we're we'd rather like, you know, spend time with our dogs and my daughter <laughs> yeah, know, like, yeah. than like go out in New York City. But um, here's the most important thing in terms of like the best tip I can give for networking or anything like that, because like networking, like when he, people hear that term, it's like, you know, they get scared. It's like, yeah. you know, same as like public speaking, like, oh my God, that's like hell. So, uh, you know, the, the biggest thing, like if you're really uncomfortable, if you're really scared to talk to people, the, the best thing that you can do is just ask them questions because here's the thing, every single person's favorite subject is themselves yes so if you ask them questions they are gonna feel like that's the best conversation so i've had conversations with people where all i've done is ask them like 15 questions and they didn't ask me one thing like <laughs> whatever it is and they said to me that was the most interesting conversation of my life you are fascinating yeah, yeah. they knew nothing about me other than that i asked them 15 questions about themselves and they love people because most people, if you can really give somebody your undivided attention, like, because that's very hard now yep. because people are going to pick up their phone, fucking rude, you know, then <laughs> people are going to yeah. do this. Like if they're at a network event, they're going to do the, what we call the meerkat where they're like looking for somebody better to talk to. So if you can sit there and you can give them your undivided attention, ask them some questions, make them feel good. Like, they will love you forever. Yeah. And, again, going back to that quote, people forget what you said. People forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. I always think about that. Yeah. Well, let us uh, let me ask you one more question. So, I know you have one more event, right, yep. for the unfair advantage. Yep. How can people get access to that? So, yeah. So, this is our final one that we're doing, which is crazy. you just announced the keynote, right? Yeah, Yesterday? Lori Harder. Um, or today. Is, yeah, today. Yeah. Uh, Lori Harder was does not really do speaking anymore. She's uh, created many, many, many successful companies, uh, you know, just a complete power. She's a good friend of ours. Um, her her husband's also going to be on a panel, which he never does. Like, yeah. we have somebody that we have another person on a panel that has, like, six million followers. Like, she's, like, I, I forget how, like, she's crazy, like, in terms of how big she is. And she's just going to be on a panel. Like, she wanted to come to be on a panel. It's insane. Um, so... Yeah, so we decided that this was going to be the last one. Now, uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that, but really, you know, we like to keep things fresh. This will be like the 10th or 11th time that we're doing it. Yeah. And it's just like it's run its course in the best way, like go out on top with it. So it's called Unfair Advantage because that's where the Unfair Advantage Live, because that's what those guys said to me. You're our unfair advantage. So I was yeah. like, all right, I'm going to go with that. So unfairadvantagelive.com. Um, 
everyone has to apply. Everyone has to go through an interview because we want to make sure that there's no douchebags in there. Yeah. So if I'm saying that you're going to feel amazing, you're going to feel great, and you're going to feel like you belong, I can't have some douchebag running <laughs> around ruining it for everyone else. That's you know true. what I mean? Yeah. So everyone, it doesn't matter who it is, they have to apply and go through an interview before they can buy a ticket. But they go there. It's a really short, you know, it's a simple process. But, you know, we want to make sure that the right people are in the room. Yeah. Well, dude, powerful conversation. Where can people find you? Uh, ChrisWinfield.com or Chris Winfield on basically any social media uh, platform. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you being on the show. My man. My pleasure.